We're continuing our studies in Chapter 9 on Membrane Transport, and in this lesson we want to look at the glucose transporter and mechanisms of co-transporters. Recall from our studies in lecture that all of the examples we considered, whether they were the beta barrel pore proteins or whether they're the more selective ion channels like the potassium channel or even the gated channel, there was some central pore through which we passed the molecule. We might open or close the pore or it might stay always open, but it always moved through a central pore. What we're looking at in the glucose transporter is an example of another type of mechanism. In this case there's a conformational change and it works by what's referred to as a rocker mechanism. So let's see how that works. Here's a figure from your book and in blue we have the transporter. As you can see the pore is exposed to the extracellular side in its starting position. Now we bind glucose, that's our red molecule here, and these transporters do tend to be very specific for their substances. So glucose binds and that triggers a conformational change and that rocks our transporter so now it opens to the inside of the cell. Now glucose is exposed to the inside so we've gone from outside to inside. Glucose releases from the transporter and now we've effectively transported glucose from outside to inside the cell. Uh, over a short period of time that transporter will reset itself back to its original conformation. And so it can rock either way. It can move substances from outside to inside or inside to outside depending on the conformation. And again the binding of the uh, solute triggers that conformational change. This is a good example of facilitated transport. No energy required. It's still driven by that concentration gradient, but it's the binding of the substance to the transporter that triggers that change. These types of transporters are similar to enzymes in that they can also become saturated with substrate. In other words, if all of our glucose transporters were saturated with glucose, we'd still see the same type of saturation plot that we saw with enzymes. Remember the hyperbolic plot, when the enzyme is saturated with substrate, then it, the velocity ceases to change. And we'd see the same type of saturation kinetics associated with the binding of a substance to its transporter in this case. They're also subject to competitive and other types of inhibition. In other words, a molecule might be similar enough to glucose that it would be transported in place of glucose. These transporters tend to be very solute selective and that's so that we can ensure that we're moving a particular nutrient into or a waste product outside of the cell and not something else. There are many different types of these types of transporters and they all work by this rocker mechanism. Now let's look at some types of transporters that we might refer to as co-transporters. And these are classified simply by how many substances move, move through and in what direction. So they may be passive or active transport in terms of whether or not it requires energy to transport the substance. But the mechanism is just how many substances move through and in what direction. So the first, and that's pictured at the top of the screen here, is a uniporter. It moves one substance through at a time and the glucose transporter we just saw was a good example of that. We might also see the lactose transporter and that's pictured here on the right. That's also an example of a unitransporter. You can see the lactose molecule in the center of all of those alpha helices. Secondly, we have symporters. They move through two substances in the same direction at the same time and an antiporter also moves through two substances at the same time but they go in opposite directions. So this is just a matter of how many substances and in what direction. In our next lesson we'll, we want to look at some examples of transporters that actually require energy expenditure in order to work and we'll see in some cases the action of one transporter is dependent on another.